let's talk about astronomy and astrology, or as I like to call it, telescope versus horoscope. The main difference between these two topics comes from how they are each defined. According to Dictionary.com, astronomy is the science that deals with the material universe beyond the Earth's atmosphere. Anything that is physically located outside the highest layer of the Earth's atmosphere is considered a part of astronomy. Astrology, on the other hand, is the study of the positions and aspects of celestial bodies in the belief that they have an influence on the course of natural, earthly occurrences and human affairs. But don't we study science? Why is there such a big divide now between these two words? Well, the main difference between what is considered science and what is considered a study is that studies do not imply scientific validity. They are done to obtain a more full and complete understanding of a topic, but there is no guarantee that the topic in question is scientifically understood. You can study for a test, or attend a Bible studies class, or get together with family and study the Quran, but these studies will not imply any scientific validation. So, while we may be inspired to practice the study of astrology, astronomy is science. So to really drive this point home, let's remember, astrology is not a science. Astrology is not based on science. It is a belief system, and that's okay. In fact, there's nothing wrong with beliefs. Just keep in mind that they don't necessarily hold any scientific validity, nor are they supported by evidence. In fact, many astrological charts have not actually been modernized. They are based on an outdated understanding of the zodiac, which we'll see more of later. In modern astrology, the 12 constellations of the zodiac are Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. But the one constellation not accounted for that is actually part of the zodiac is Ophiuchus, situated between Scorpio and Sagittarius. So how does that affect the dates associated with each sign if there's now a 13th zodiac sign to consider? So here are the dates corresponding to each of the zodiacal signs as according to astrology. But when we arrive at Ophiuchus, what dates can we actually assign this constellation if there are no additional days between November 22nd and November 23rd? If these dates are adjusted according to astronomy, we see now that the new dates correctly represent the times of the year that the sun will pass in front of each constellation in the daytime sky as it travels from east to west each day. So if your birthday is between November 28th and December 17th, congratulations, you are an Ophiuchus.